passwords in there, not just for yours, right, but for the entire service. Thousands right. of yeah, devices. Says, yeah, hard coded passwords. So if they connect to yours, then now your neighbor's is vulnerable, and the one down the street from there. Just a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, there's there's lots of bad programming practices because they're trying to make it as cheap as possible to send it out to sell it as to as many people as possible. Yeah, so be very careful. Uh, and what I'm doing at my house is I have a PFSense firewall, and the PFSense firewall can uh, run VLANs right off of that. So you can have multiple networks right on that for your internal network. Uh, so I have one set up for my IoT devices, uh, like my Roku and my um, uh, Chromecast. You know, well, no, I didn't put my Chromecast on it because Chrome requires you to be on the same Wi-Fi to work right. Um, but, you know, things like that. You, you put it on a separate network, it can access the Internet, but it can't access anything else. So if it does get hacked, then maybe your baby pictures from the baby monitor gets, hmm. uh, you know, gets stolen or they can start taking your, talking to your baby, which is a bad thing. Uh, but it's not as bad as getting into your personal PC and grabbing all your tax info. Or getting your password for your bank. Yeah, social security numbers or lots of Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. All right. So the next one is called it's using MacOff to cause a network switch to fail open. Hmm. And what that means and if you don't know much about networking and network switches, is a, a network switch is built where it will only forward out traffic that's destined for your computer, for your MAC address. Uh, so if, you, if an attacker plugs in, it starts, starts up Wireshark and starts listening to the network, it's only going to get things that are coming to them. Generally, if they're not supposed to be on the network, not much is going to come to them other than broadcast messages. And even at that, it gives them a vector to start figuring out what's on the network. Um, there's um, so what the MacOff does is it floods the switch with millions of pack of um, MAC addresses, <coughs> and what a, a switch does to be able to figure out who's on what port, it goes through and um, it has a MAC table, a MAC address table where it as associates. The um, associates the MAC address to the switch port. Uh, so if you start sending millions of MAC addresses at this uh, switch, it's going to start filling up that table. And at some point, it's going to uh, it's going to fill up, and it's not going to know what to do. It's going to crash the OS because it is running an operating system. And at that point, it Instead of stopping all network traffic, it just opens up and gets all network traffic out all ports. It becomes a, it becomes a hub. Exactly. <laughs> um, hmm. there we go. So what I'm going to do is switch over <coughs> to this. Because what I need to do is I need direct uh, Ethernet connection. To the switch. And in this case, the switch is going to be our little wireless router. And you think of it as a router, so why would it be a switch? But if you look on it, there's uh, the WAN port, and then there's four other ports. That's the network switch. Uh, so we're going to run it against that. Now, ideally, your um, the counter for that the countermeasure is for um, you have a managed switch and limit the amount of MAC addresses that are, are allowed on each port. Uh, it's called port security. Uh, it typically, if you, you turn on port security and leave it at the default uh, options, it will allow one MAC address. Uh, and that's good security practice in general because you don't want 
people plugging in another switch on top of that and then plugging in 10 more devices that they're not supposed to have on the network. Uh, but there's, with Cisco switches and any managed switch, you, there's the ability to uh, allow more of them. You can, you can allow as many as the hardware allows it to, to run without failing. Tony, do you know if you can do it where you can break a Wi-Fi to break uh, AP isolation through the same yeah. method? Or that's good. I haven't looked into it. I assume so, but I'm not sure. Um, I actually, I would assume it would fail most because if you crash a router running Wi-Fi, you're crashing more than just yeah. switching. Yeah. Much, yeah. And that's actually what I suspect is going to happen on this. this we're little, we're going to it'll just crash. kill the router <laughs> instead of failing it open. Uh, all right. So the Part of this is uh, uh, Wireshark. Because it was just so Wireshark as a network capture device. Choose the Ethernet address. Oops. That's not working. And we're going to start the caption. Which is where? <laughs> this is a different. I use. Huh? Oh yeah, that's right. It's a little sharp thing. Um, and on this, it's going to send us a few things. So we're getting broadcast. <coughs> messages, uh, but as we've shown from before, there's other people connected to this. You guys are connected to the internet, doing things, uh, sending emails, text messages, things, but we're not seeing any of that coming through here. This is because of that uh, switch port has only given us what's destined for our MAC address. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to Mac off and then interface zero. Well, if you leave it without the defaults to eat zero, and this is it flooding the, the wow. switch <laughs> with Mac address. Uh, it just will go and go and go, depending on the hardware, and how much it can take, how, much, how long is how long this runs. You know, a low end, did it stop working? Well, my internet ain't working. Okay, the, a low end switch uh, will take a couple minutes for this running. I end, a high end will, will continue to run and you know take a little bit longer. So we'll let that go for a little bit. But see, we're getting stuff from other Mac ad or from other IP addresses now. Yeah. So I can stop the I can stop this with Control C. We come back here and what's the dark person with the light to die? Oh, there we go. See, now we're we're continuing to get 
things that are not uh, destined for this IP address. You know, uh, so source. And so here's the source device, and it's going out to 250, which is no, that's a uh, multicast. No, that's a destination. Oh, 239. Yeah. So that's going out to the internet and doing an M search, whatever that is, some HTTP request. <coughs> These are ARC requests. So whoever's on the Sonic device is looking for the Apple. Who is 110? How come my internet comes out? Uh, it might just be, I don't know, you know, this doesn't show everything. And really, it depends on how much traffic is running through, is how much we're seeing. You can see there's other queries, responses. Uh, so you look at the destinations. And, and uh, Wireshark has a lot of tools. You can do, um, uh, you can start doing analytics from here. So well, Wire, Wireshark is a good tool that if something is failing, as a network uh, administrator, you can run it and start capturing and find the exact packets that are causing it to fail. Uh, or, or find the error message coming out in those packet messages. Um, in, a, in, a, in a switch network, it's, it's, it's hard to tap into a network and watch the traffic between hosts because exactly. the switch stops that from you. And this just cracked that wide hmm. open. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're not running port security on your managed switch, then you need to turn it on. And it's a configuration on every single uh, every single port. Uh, I know with Cisco uh, switches, you can do an in interface range. So you, you can choose every device and turn on port security. Um, you can see it continue to go. This, yeah. depending on how much traffic's running across to how long you let it run, whether you're... I'm not showing up there, but I've been using this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, and, yeah, it's not scrolling through too fast. I've seen it scroll so, through so fast, you can't watch it live. You have to wait, let it capture, and then go back later and go analy yeah. analyze it. Um, there's, well, let's see. I'm playing a YouTube video and I'm still not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you connected to his access point? Yes, I'm 107. So I well, you said it stopped for a little bit. Did it? Your computer didn't drop off and grab the mug site, did it? No, I didn't. I'll redo IPA DVR and make sure. Um, yeah, well, same thing here. I'm I'm on the rainbow and I'm not seeing yeah, 106 come up. Yeah, 107 still. Okay. I mean. It, it all depends. Like I said, this is uh, unpredictable. It's an old router. Mm. And because it's a router and a uh, switch, it's possible. I don't, if somebody knows, correct me. But it's possible that the Wi Fi is considered one switch, the wired is considered a different switch. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it might be uh, failing open on the wired and, that and not getting all the traffic across. It's, it's seeing my renew. But you are getting traffic on the wire. Oh, yeah. So it's weird. It's hit and miss because of this. But if you're running this on a, uh, a full switch where you have a lot of watching. connected devices, wired connected, you'll get a lot more traffic through. Uh, one of our labs in my class was was the same lab, and then you connect to an FTP server. And because FTP is not encrypted, you're grabbing usernames and passwords right there. Because and it tells you right here instead of saying who has this. It says FTP user, you know, <laughs> my admin, yeah. and then the, it says FTP, the next few packets down say FTP password, yeah. and then the password. Yeah. So that's why it's always important to run uh, encrypted protocols. Another really fun thing to do on this is if you run IP phones that aren't encrypted, you can use that club thing you have there, and you can actually re put the packets together and listen to the conversation. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, wow. I, actually, I did that wow. for uh, for my day job. I we were having problems with a, a PBX at one location. It wasn't calling out to the voicemail server, right? And they were sending it across the trip, uh, the the SIP line, um, or 
except trunk. And uh, so what I did is, because I, they, the PBX had like four different lines coming off, I wasn't sure which line the SIP was going to come out of. So I just grabbed the uplink port, spanned that to my, uh, my laptop, and started the capture. And I picked up and I dialed the number to go across the SIP line, and I started, I started just flooding through. And I couldn't figure out what it is. But what you do is then you go back, like I said, under telephony, you can say, uh, uh, I should be able to show you, hopefully. This is a different version than what I'm used to using. Um, right here, SIP flows. And so SIP, st statistics, statistics. So what SIP flows will do, and because we're not running any SIP right here, it'll show the like uh, initiation the actual UDP, because uh, VoIP is UDP, so it'll just show it as one big stream. It doesn't show individual packets for the, uh, and then it'll show the disconnect. And in that UDP stream, it'll show the source phone number and the destination phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can go through and, sign and find out who's calling who, then you connect on it, you say uh, encode, it'll encode that stream, you, and you hit play, and it'll play back the entire conversation. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's why it's important for as a research tool and for uh, analytics or in uh, diagnostics tool. But it's also a very powerful tool for uh, attackers. That's why it's uh, we don't allow it on any of our production, uh, like open production machines, Wireshark. Uh, okay. Only specific uh, network admins. And uh, security admins are allowed to have Wireshark installed on their computers. Wireshark needs a whole a whole presentation on its own. Yeah, and actually, so Wireshark Fantastic. recently went to version uh, two, so it has a new interface. Uh, we don't need to save this. Um, but that's where, like, if I did save it. And then I saw, like most of you are probably using uh, secure connections up. I could then grab that secure connection and do a brute force against whatever packet that has your password and find your password out of it. <laughs> and that's where uh, John the Ripper is uh, one option for that. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, I forgot where I was at. Could I ask a question? Oh, Wireshark. Yeah, I was wondering uh, when you said uh, capture the secure connection, what what kind of secure connection were you talking about there? It's uh, my SSL or SSH yeah. or secure mail connection. Anything that's a secure connection. Generally, if it has something S or S something, yeah. like SFTP, uh, SSH, HTTPS. Well, that's FTP. Of course, if you use a telnet, we'll take that too. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how, uh, how is an SSH? It's pretty secure, I think, using SSH, isn't it? I could it is. It is very secure. Yeah. That's where uh, there's options. When If you manually install an SSH server, it gives you options how large to make the key. Right. So, right now, but now we have it saved. And yeah. Okay. I can now go yeah, down the road. <laughs> yeah, I can go down. You know, say two years down the road, we're going to have quantum computing, and I can, <laughs> I can crack it. You know, who knows? So the, the bigger you make it, the better. Uh, and it, it's relative to the processing speed that you're using. So you're not going to run a really big. Uh, crypto key on a Raspberry Pi, <laughs> on an old Raspberry Pi. The newer ones are a little bit better. Uh, but if you're running a uh, an octa core, 24 gig PC they have at home, then you know you're not going to worry about encryption uh, performance that much. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm put my password on the video. I, like I said, 
that was that's like near and dear to me because of my day job. It, it's something cool that I really I thought you know it's nice to keep a couple of devices off the network. That's why you limit it. I didn't realize that there was the Mac flood attack to to crash the switch. So port security and on a Cisco switch, this is the command you use. So it's a, you go in onto the interface like int fa one. Uh, one slash one or whatever it is, and then port security by default that will limit you to one MAC address, and it will um, what do you call it? It just it temporarily shuts down the access on the, the port. It doesn't um, it doesn't make it permanent. Um, there's lots of other options with it, so look it up. Uh, all right. This is how it get pulled me. Uh, again, I'm Tony Bemis, BemisHosting.com. Uh, I'm on Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, my website again. You go to BemisHosting.com, and I have uh, some other presentations. I gave a, a GBG, GPG talk a couple years ago here. Uh, I have a Pembrokecon Pember talk about setting up your own home router. Check it out. I'm also a uh, podcast host for the Sunday Morning Linux Review, uh, which is a weekly show about Linux news and open source fun. Uh, and Tom is our new host. I say new, but it's been a while, eight, eight nine months now. Yeah. So He's so done a great job, at, too. I like this show. We're recording over at uh, Podcast Detroit, which there's like 40 other, or no, almost 50 other podcasts on that network. Mary um, got embarrassed sorry. at semi good cool. meeting. I had it hooked to just uh, um, speakers. <laughs> that <no> <laughs> 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 She's yeah. going, how did you sound? And I go, oh, here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm at work, and I'm talking to one of the network guys, and I need an old switch just to use for something, right? And so he takes me into his back cage, and he's got pallets with, you know, five-foot-high piles of old Cisco switches that are coming out of production, right? And just going to be recycled to someone who's going to resell them to somebody else. So I imagine there is probably like a lot of old equipment floating around out there that people are using. Is there anybody like running stuff, you know, maybe white hat people that are looking at the network in general to see if the internet itself is, is safe? Um, there's all sorts of research into that for the internet in general. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. I can claim and start. For old devices like that, there are places that uh, do recycle them, clean them up, resell them. Uh, I actually, there's a, a place in Dearborn that recycles stuff. Uh, and I picked up a couple of routers and switches from there. So if anybody's interested in some cheap uh, 3750 24-port switch for uh, 50 bucks, it's a 10 100 uh, uh, router, uh, do you have any 48? Huh? Do you have any 48? Yeah. Okay. 48 so I know where those are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't. They, I don't think they said 40. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, thing, but it's 3750B1. So it's, the, it's an old one. There, it's 10 years old at this point. It's from 2006. Um, but there's the other stuff they have, like um, PCs, laptops. If you're looking for something, let me know. Fairly cheap. Uh, I don't ship to India, or not India, specifically, overseas. If you want to buy from me, you need to come and see me, give me cash, uh, and I will get you hooked up. So don't send me a message saying you want me to PayPal, or you're going to PayPal it to me some other day. You want me to ship <laughs> May I have your attention? Uh, the time is now 8.30, and the library so will be closing at 30 minutes at 9 p.m. <coughs> Please be advised that the internet connection will begin to shut down. Go on my website, you can read through it. Uh, there it is. Uh, I added the This is that YouTube video of 
a phone attack. So if you want to go check it out. Whenever you're ready. Right Here's the, the, the KH6HZFWSU. Yeah, or go to my website. The presentation's already on there. Check it out. Uh, yeah.